Hey, welcome back to The Preacher and the Prodigy College Football Predictions. It's week number four in this 2021 season. It's been an eventful season. What are your big picture takeaways on the college football season through three weeks, Jericho? Alabama almost lost. I didn't think I'd say that, but Alabama almost lost in the swamp. Uh, Florida had a really tough game, came down to the wire. Um, I heard there was an extra point missed, and then if they had made that extra point, then they could have just tied the game, but they had to go for two, and they didn't get it, so the game ended with a two-point loss for Florida. Um, the whiteout game, Penn State won that game by eight. That was a pretty mm-hmm. fun game. Um, I think for me, my big picture takeaways are the the five or six superpowers in college football all appear to be vulnerable. Alabama, as you mentioned, very tight game in the swamp. Florida's going to be a tough place to play, but I had Alabama covering 14 and a half. I did too. We both did. Um, we both got that. Ohio one. State lo- loses to Oregon and really is uncomfortable in games against Minnesota and needs the last three minutes of the game to put distance between them and Tulsa. And now Kerry Combs re- replaced as the defensive coordinator. C.J. Stroud out for a week. And then you look at Clemson, woo, nail biter oh. against Georgia Tech, fourteen to eight final. Um, Oklahoma just barely gets by Tulane. Notre Dame and really barely gets by Nebraska too. That rivalry game. Correct. Notre Dame really should have lost to uh, uh, Tulane. To, no, uh, Toledo. Toledo and uh, Toledo did some poor clock management. They're scoring a touchdown when they could have kneeled and kicked the game-winning field goal. So uh, right now, Georgia seems to be the team that has proven the most. But again, they didn't even score an offensive touchdown against Clemson. So. It seems like there's parity uh, in college football this year, and so it could be a fun, fun year. And right now, the only team that hasn't really had a legitimate close game against a, I don't want to say, but a team that they think they should have beaten like a lot more mm-hmm. would be Oregon. Because Fresno State is a really solid football yeah, team. Yeah, Fresno State. And Oregon beats Ohio up. State. They pound Stony Brook. Um, in the Pac-12, which is saying it, something. You didn't want to just roll out of bed and pound Stony Brook. Yeah, but I mean, it just really has not shown me that much doubt. Even without Kayvon Thibodeau and Justin Flo, their two best defensive right. players. So right now, it would seem like you you could legitimately think about uh, maybe a dozen teams as playoff competitors. Com- contenders right now often it's like well how many doors are going to be open to that two or three um <clears throat> clemson's already lost one losing another one might knock them out um alabama probably has some margin what ohio state's lost the game so yeah who's going to jump in there is it going to be a penn state uh is it going to be uh you know a team you know like oregon is it going to be one of the two michigan schools who are both playing much better than anticipated. Yep. So we got a lot to, to talk about over the course of this year. This week, less to talk about. Uh, a pretty uh, boring slate of games, actually, for week four. And uh, we've instituted a new rule that whoever is leading in the Preacher versus the Prodigy uh, game count has to pick three games first. Because otherwise, they could just use a rope dope strategy and try to win out the rest of the year by uh, picking the same thing as the other person picked. So right now, I am at ten and five. You are at six, six and, and nine. nine. An embarrassing six and nine. And uh, so I will pick three games first. You'll pick two games first. That will give you the opportunity at minimum to make up one game. That means you get started off. All right. Game number one. Nebraska. At Michigan State, Michigan State is giving five points. Yeah, so Nebraska really played a terrific game against Oklahoma. Uh, they In the locker room, Nebraska guys were saying, we're going to win out, we've got our confidence back. Michigan State, at the beginning of the year, a lot of us thought they were a 5-7 and seven type team. And um, again, Miami caveats being what they are, Michigan State has looked better. 
I'm going to take Michigan State. I'm going to lay the points, and I'm going to take the Spartans to to cover in a game that I think will be a you know kind of a 27 to uh, 20 type game. And I think I'm going to have to agree with you. I mean, Michigan State. We had an argument about this last night. Michigan State's running game has been really hard to stop. Kenneth Walker is the leading rusher right now in rushing yards. Um, in I'm pretty sure in all of college football right now. And Nebraska showed some signs of uh, wholesomeness against Oklahoma, putting number three team on the ropes. Although Oklahoma has had some close games, um, it's a pretty nice um I wouldn't say it's a nice loss, but it's it's not, a qual- kind of a quality loss it's a quality on the loss. road against the number three team in the country, and you only lose by seven, which is yeah. good. But I gotta take Michigan State. They've just looked solid. I mean, Nebraska losing to Illinois, yeah, it's not gonna help them at all. And Michigan State three and zero for the first time since their playoff run in twenty fifteen. So I'm gonna take Michigan State here. All right, we agree. Okay, coming down to Texas, we have the number 14 team in the country, Iowa State Cyclones at Baylor. Iowa State is giving seven. Um, Iowa State coming off a big win against the UNLV, which they were never really tested. Yeah. Baylor undefeated, correct? Undefeated, yep. They look strong. Fighting Dave Aranda's. They look strong against, I mean, Kansas, but like it's Kansas. Right. Oh, man. No, I'm going to take Baylor, this one. I think Baylor has shown that they're a really good team. They've allowed seven points in each of the last two mm-hmm. games, mm-hmm. and they scored something like 66 and 45 points. And their only real close game was against Texas State. Now, given it's the first game of the year, so I think that one could maybe go as like a fluke. They still win it, though. Um, and I'm going to take Baylor at home against Iowa State. Yeah. A couple of years ago, I think we called this like the audition bowl because we saw Matt Rule and Matt Campbell both as guys who were probably on the radars for bigger jobs. Matt Rule, of course, since has gone over to be the head coach of the Carolina Panthers and is having you know decent success. Um, Matt Campbell still at Iowa State, maybe waiting for the right job. Uh, this is a, a tough one to call too. I'm going to take Iowa State. Um, I, I'm tempted to go with Baylor with you, and seven points seems like a lot. Um, but I think uh, that he seems like Matt Campbell's pattern is the beginning of the year. He always has a clunker against a northern Iowa type of school, loses to Iowa, and then shortly thereafter gets it figured out. I like Brees Hall um, on the road. I like... Uh, the ability of Matt Campbell to make adjustments. I think that seven is a really attractive uh, number for something right on the nose. But I'm going to take uh, Iowa State to win the game uh, by by at least eight. All right. So that's two picks in, three to go. Rutgers at the big house, our number 19 Michigan team. Michigan is minus 20 and a half. Mm-hmm. Now, this is coming after Rutgers players got accused and suspended because of domestic fi- violence with, like, a paintball gun. So they will be losing a starter at, I think, it's cornerback. And did that move the line about two points, maybe? Was it 19? One or two points. Yeah. But all in all, that shouldn't affect them too much. But the, our Michigan Wolverines have been looking solid. Yeah, their running game is number one average running team in the country. So in Michigan's three games, they have beat the spread by an average of nineteen. Not that they've won games by nineteen; they they've beat, beat the, the number spread. by nineteen. Michigan is much better through three games than um, I thought they'd be. Now I predicted them to start the year four and zero, and and so they haven't won any more games than I thought. But they've looked better, and the fancy stats and advanced metrics love Michigan right now. I'm going to take Rutgers. Uh, I think this game is a 38-20 to 20 type of a game. Um, I think Michigan is in control. Rutgers is going to get, uh, at li- like, uh, they're going to get a, a, a punt return touchdown or a kickoff return touchdown. They're going to get a special teams touchdown, something like that. Um, I think at the end of the day, Michigan's yardage, kind of yards per play, things like that, third down conversions will be much better than 
Rutgers, but Rutgers under Greg Schiano will do something timely, and this game could be 21 to 10 at halftime or something like that. Um, and Michigan feels uncomfortable. I'm going to go with Rutgers. Maybe it's a hedge on the heart, but I think that Michigan comes down to earth just a little bit in the first Big Ten game. I'll take Michigan 38 to 20. I got to go with Michigan. I think it's going to be a blowout from the start. It might be like 21 to 3 at the end of the first. They're just going to pound the rock and get a very good yards per carry average. It could be something like 31 to 10 at the half, and the Michigan just starts to slow down. Um, start to just put in some backups like they did against Northern Illinois. Maybe give uh, Donovan Edwards and Tavier Dunlap a couple more um, carries. We're not going to see Dunlap in this game, yeah, but we'll see. Maybe we might I hope you're right. Goal. I hope you're right. But I'm going to take Michigan. You said 19 points over the spread on average, not total, on average. Right, over over the spread, over yeah. The, yeah, over the spread. And I think that's going to continue not by 19 points, but maybe by... I don't know, seven or so I see. What this, do you see the final score of this game? I see be? the final score of this game being like, I don't know, like 38 to 17, maybe a 45. That's pretty, you, that's pretty much, I said 38 to 20. All you're doing is you're leaning on the just the, the edge of the I need to get games there. here, all right? all right? So, I mean, I think it's going to be a blowout from the start, and then Michigan's just going to start to settle down. Um, But I'm going to take Michigan in this one. See, part of the reason that Michigan has beaten the spread by so many points is because they've ripped off so many scores in the run game. And I just don't think they're going to get as many 40, 50-yard runs in this game. So I do think Michigan will have fewer possessions, and it's really hard to outscore a team by 20 with fewer possessions. So, well, this gives you a chance to catch up. All right. At Jerry World Stadium, we have the number seven team in the country, Jerry! Texas a and going up against the upstart, very... Fighting Sam Pittman's. Yeah. Arkansas Hogs. The line is Texas A&M by four and a half. Yeah, you picked this one first. You know what? I'm going to take Arkansas. I think they just came out of the gates and just showed everybody that they can be a, a, maybe a, not quite a top four team. In the SEC, but they can be kind of legit. Um, and Texas a and almost losing to Colorado. And remember, Colorado got blown out by 30. Yeah. At home. Yeah. And Texas a and really has not shown that they were the team that they were last year, not the firepower on offense. And losing their starting quarterback, Haynes King, does not help. Um, and I'm going to take Arkansas and K.J. Jefferson, and I like what Sam Pittman has done there. Sam Pittman is a very good coach. Offensive line coach. Um, I, I, I can't tell you how much I agree with you other than to say I would take Arkansas plus four and a half. Arkansas is – I take Arkansas minus four and a half, rather. Um, I think Arkansas is playing very confident football, and – these games, these Texas A&M Arkansas games, I said the other day, they always are fairly close games. That you know, they sometimes go into overtime, or they feel like they've gone into overtime. Very competitive, very entertaining games. I think it's a similar vein this year at a neutral site. I think that uh, Arkansas could win this game by a touchdown in overtime. I, I think they're going to win this game by a touchdown. I like the Hogs. I like what Sam Pittman is building there. A fantastic recruiter, terrific offensive line coach, and the team is playing with a great deal of confidence. And again, Texas A&M down a And I mean, 7 against 16, and when you pick 16 to win, you don't pick them to win by much. So, like, an overtime game is possible, but in the end, I see Arkansas outright winning All right, this game. so we agree on two, we disagree on two. Bring and it to the final game. Coming to Soldier Field, college game day, Notre Dame who's been on the ropes with a lot of bad teams, going up against Wisconsin. The line on this game is Wisconsin giving six and a half. And I'll, I take, I'll take all six and a half. Going with the Irish in this one, um, I think Notre Dame is a better team than they have uh, looked. I think they, they really they've worked out some of the kinks. Obviously, they looked very poor in Tallahassee. But, you know, Tallahassee is a tough environment to play on a Sunday night when everybody's jacked up. 
Um, Notre Dame it really did not play well against Toledo, as we know. I think Notre Dame puts it together this week, and uh, I just do not see Wisconsin winning by a touchdown. Uh, I think Notre Dame may win the game, but I do think that they'll cover. Give me the Irish. Uh, this is a tough one. I think Jack Cohn can really move the ball around the field. Yeah, and Jack Cohn. Williams. Jack Cohn coming from Wisconsin. So yeah, and I think he's going to be motivated. I think the Soldier Field crowd. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit, bit more Notre Dame than Wisconsin. Yeah. I'm going with the Irish. I'm going to disagree with you. I'm going to go Wisconsin. I mean, Notre Rolling Dame. Rolling the dice on a disagree. Notre right. Dame has almost lost. They went to overtime against a team. You said it was Saturday night. Well, apparently Jacksonville State came into Tallahassee. It was Sunday night. Sunday night. Well, I mean, that's what you said. But then Jacksonville State, FCS team, comes into... Tallahassee, and beats them. Okay, I know they won a last-second touchdown, but you ain't going to win the game on one touchdown unless it's 7 nothing. Look, I agree with you. Notre Dame has not played well, and I think that, that, that what we know about Notre Dame has been put into that number at 6.5, and, and I think Notre Dame cleaned some things up this week, because I, and I don't think they're 6.5 points worse than Wisconsin. But I think that I just, they're snapping out of it. I just say that like Wisconsin's defense is so hard to score on. Okay, they allowed the n- number, like, what is it? Is Penn State 5? Or is it 4? I can't remember, but it was scoreless at halftime against Penn State. And I think that, like, Paul was, Christ is going to run a time of possession offense. So he's not going to let Kyron Williams I, or Jack Cohn on the field. I'm, I, I think your point is made better if the game's playing at Camp Randall. This is in an NFL stadium. If and this, if and this they're game, not jumping around. I just think it's not going to be as intimidating. If this game was at Notre Dame, I might take Notre Dame, but this game is at a neutral site. Right. So Which, you don't have to take Notre Dame to win. No, I'm going to take You're laying Wisconsin. six and a half. Give, give me all the points then, baby. I'll take them. All right. So. We disagree on three. So I can pull this within one by the end of the week. Or... You could I be could down be by seven. Seven. That's not good. So we'll have to see what happens. We agree on a couple of the games, disagree on three of the games. I'm going to ask you this as a closing. As a Michigan fan, do you want Wisconsin coming hosting coming into that game where they host Michigan next weekend, coming off a big win over Notre Dame, or coming and having lost to Notre Dame? What kind of Wisconsin do you want to face? A win. You want to face I want to a face a win because the Wisconsin team, like basically any team, if you come off a loss where you should win, you're going to be angry. All right, you want to win the next game big time. Mm-hmm. They're given six and a half points to an, the number twelve team in the country. If they lose that game, they're going to be mad. So I don't want them to be furious and have Paul Christ dial up his time of possession clock and just keep on having 90 like 18 yard 18 like 90 yard 18 play drives that last 8 minutes and Michigan you know maybe has a couple first downs and then doesn't get it and then it happens again and then by then we're just not going to win the game so I want to go up against a statistically better team better in rankings and if we win that game it'll help us if we lose that game it will also help us all right uh, we'll see i'm not, i was just curious so we'll see how things go this week until week five next week i'm the preacher i'm the prodigy peace, peace out